It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Chris Mulkey. Hey, Chris, how are you? Hi, Doug. I'm very good today. Happy Saturday. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. I know we had a little trouble with scheduling, but we finally got you here, and I'm happy to have you on. And we're going to be talking a little bit about your latest film called The World Without You. And Mm -hmm. before we get to that, though, I wanted just to hit on your bio just a little, if you don't mind. Uh, That's okay. Your PR people didn't actually send me a bio, so I'm kind of working off your IMDb. So I hope it's accurate. <laughs> if it's not, I, ch- I check. Doug, I check my IMDb all the time, and it's it's very accurate. Okay, all right. So just real quick for people that might not know who you are, uh, you've been an actor and a musician and a writer director for a number of years. You grew up in the Midwest. You majored in acting at the University of Minnesota. I've always been curious. Do you find that a degree in acting helps you to get work as an actor? Well, um, that's a great story. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I was in my senior year at the University of Minnesota, and um, I took a sabbatical and went out to do an off-Broadway play. And when I came back, I took the fall quarter off my senior year. And when I came back, I registered for this for my winter quarter, and but I was offered a job at a classical repertory theater in Minneapolis called the Minneapolis Children's Theater. They do plays for young kids, uh, young adults, and um, and adults, uh, Moliere, Shakespeare, Pirandello. And they they offered me um, a job teaching and being a company member. So I I did the winter semester, and it was really fraught because I was in all the plays and I was teaching classes and I was taking a full load. And I thought, you know what? Uh, as as uh, Tennessee Williams said, I think I'm going to quituate. So I quituated. I, I, I'm a professional actor. I'm working in a repertory theater company. I'm done with my college. That's it. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I would have gone to the theater and seen you taking my spot. Well, yeah, exactly. But it does... Take the gig. Yeah, the mm-hmm. degree probably would get you a job as an acting teacher. Right, but not necessarily as an actor. Um, yeah, but those are two different things. Those are, one exactly. Is a, yeah, you know, one's a race car driver and one's a mechanic. Yeah, well, it's like authors. Yeah. I mean, authors who get degrees in English can always teach English if they can't sell a book. So it, it a gig. Yeah, always, always seems to go like that. All right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, um, so I've been very, I'm very happy, and I've taught at. Uh, I taught at the, the Ruskin. I teach at the Ruskin Theater in Santa Monica, and I taught for two years at UCLA. And um, yeah, I'm an actor. I do movies and TV and stage. Yeah, I okay. like that. Uh, you're also a musician, though. And according to this, I, you've recorded eight albums. Wow, that's pretty good. Yes, and five Christmas albums under a pseudonym. Okay. Um, I'm 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 um, on Spotify. If you ask for Vic Mulkey and the Blue Veins, then you get straight up Jimmy Reed, Muddy Waters, blues. Oh, all that's right. That's really, really fun stuff. So, so you're uh, then, a guitar player? I play guitar, mandolin, bass, uh, lead guitar, finger picks, slide guitar. Yeah, all these strings. Okay, you know. cool. All right. Don't play a violin, though, but, and I'm not going to, no. I'm, I'm friends with a really good violin players, and I wouldn't even attempt that. It would be just disastrous. I, you know, I took, I play guitar and piano primarily, and it's interesting that huh. on your bio it says that you're naturally left-handed, but you play guitar right. I'm the same yeah. way. I'm a left-handed person, but I play guitar right. And is that weird? And yeah. When did you start? When did you start playing? I, you know, like when I was about 11 years old, and the reason was because my father just had a right-handed guitar in the house, and I picked it up, and that's how I learned. I didn't know any better. It wasn't until yeah. years later yeah. 
that somebody said, why don't you try playing a left-handed guitar since you're left-handed? And I picked it up when I was about 25, maybe, and it just oh, felt God. so weird. It was like you'd have to learn all over again. And I said, ah, forget it. My, my, my sister-in-law, um, Mary Nina Abraham, she is a fantastic vocalist and a great guitar picker, and she's left-handed, and she just plays the gu- guitar upside down and right-handed like Jimi Hendrix. That's even weirder because you don't. The strings are backwards, right? Well, for her, they're not. Yeah, for for yeah, for sure. Like the bass string is on the bottom. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's it's that's crazy. wild. But she's a she's a great Travis picker. She's just just great. You know, I I, I met and uh, knew Jimi Hendrix a little bit back in the day. Oh, did you? Really wow. nice guy. Yeah, really nice guy. When I was a kid, yeah, really nice guy. Cool. Where did you? How did you meet great. Jimi Hendrix? Um, I was at a concert. Um, I was a uh, kind of, I, I played. Uh, I started p- playing music uh, as a harmonica player, and I was playing in all the quote um, uh, African American bars in town that played blues in, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. With my friend uh, Bobby Lyle and Willie Weeks, uh, who went on to play with the Rolling Stones and Capitol Records. But anyhow, so um, a friend of theirs, Joey Southern. Uh, he and I were really good friends and he worked with uh, Capitol Records and he, he was in town he flew in from LA he said Jimi Hendrix is playing uh, do you want to come and see him I said I see him before but I'll, I'll go again and he said yeah and then I, we go to the after party so I went to the after party and I was in this penthouse in Minneapolis and there's this guy kind of smoked a cigarette in the uh, back of the day um, in the kitchen just all along I went that's Jimi Hendrix and I went Oh man, the guy doesn't even have anybody to talk to, so I wanted to send Jimmy A, Chris Mulkey, and and uh, said hi, and then we just started talking, and just we talked until about four in the morning with these other two people just laughing, and then I drove him to his hotel. Yeah, wow, that's that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Gave him a ride. Yeah, gave Jimmy a ride. What year was that? Do you remember? Nineteen sixty-nine. Oh, okay. It was uh, three months before he died. Wow, what a great story. Uh, let me hit on one more thing about music here, and then we'll switch over to your film. Uh, okay. S- Super Tramp, which when I yeah. saw that, I thought, oh, my God, I haven't thought of that band in probably 40 years. Mm-hmm. You were you were in their music video, uh, Brother, Where Are You Bound? Okay, I don't, I'm not yeah, familiar that was, with that song. That was, an anti, that was an anti-war uh, music video. We are in the midst of, you know, the... The, uh, the nuclear crisis, um, you know, between Reagan and uh, Gorbachev, and um, <coughs> excuse me, and um, Supertramp did the first long form music video. It was thirty five minutes, wow. and it was anti nuclear war, stop the war, and stop the killing, and um, it was really well received. But um, there's a there was a huge hue and cry that it was, you know subversive because I we dared to question the nuclear imperative which I really dug it's a really cool song and they're a great band oh my god oh I, yeah I remember their album uh, the logical what was it called well the logical song oh, yeah, was uh, one of their songs the, the album was oh I forget it was super tramp live or something that I had back in the 70s <laughs> and yeah 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 yeah, yeah they, but they're great guys and uh so we did. Um, I was the hero in this thing. It's a cool piece. You can watch it on uh, watch it on YouTube, and you can also go to YouTube. I I wrote and directed a music video with my friend uh, Jose Stefani. Called it's called. You can find it on YouTube. Chris Malky Shooters Count, and it's a music video of um, um, bringing attention to the uh, the gun violence in America. And we did it in 2019. And it's a cool groove and a great song. And check it out; it's really cool. Uh, but um, sadly, it's uh, it's you know relevant today because the shootings haven't stopped, and so we reposted it. So it's on YouTube, but it's a really great, thought-provoking YouTube uh, video with a uh, with a great groove. Shooters count, Chris Mulkey. Okay, yeah, definitely yeah. I'll check that out. All right, yeah, it's cool. So your latest film is called "The World Without You," and. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the film, because I'm just looking at the movie poster, and I I can't quite figure out what it is. Somebody dies, obviously. But is it a veteran film? I mean, is there something with war? It's, 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 um, 
It's a family that's commemorating the one-year anniversary of the death of their son. And this, their son was the journalist who was beheaded by ISIS oh, on okay. YouTube. All right. And so it's, it's the, the family coming to terms with the grief at the anniversary of the, of the death of my son, their brother and sister, you know, brothers and sisters all together. You know, the family dynamic and, you know, how people deal with it. And um, yeah, it's really thought-provoking. It's a beautiful film. P.J. Byrne is in it. Who's in, who's in everything? He's in the boys right now on, on Netflix, and you know, and, and Suzanne Johnson is fantastic in it. And, you know, it's it's really a great film. I, I was really happy. I play the father of the of the of the boy, and I, I followed the news events. So when they offered me the role in the movie, I, I was really super happy after I read it. It was like, it's a great film, and it, um, it's some of it's very funny, and uh, some of it's you know. Very, very thought, thought provoking and emotional. Yeah. Did you meet the father, the actual father? No, I did not. Um, no, I, I, I didn't meet any of the family. No. no did they? Was, uh, they weren't available. Were Were they? Uh, I don't know. Participating in this film at all? No. 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 We we don't we don't use his actual name. It's kind of a an adaptation of the real story. So we didn't want to use the real the real family. No. Oh, okay. All right. The film is out now? The film is out, and we've won a bunch of awards, and, um, you know, it's it's really just, it's it's it's, it's an amazing film. It's, you know, an hour and a half, 90 minutes, 90 minutes group, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do you, do you know where it, uh, it's available? Is it a Netflix, or is it, where is it available? I think it's on all the platforms, you know. It's, you, know I, I, you know, I haven't checked. I've got working on another film right now. I'm directing actually a film right now, so okay. not on my totally not on my radar. But go see it. Everybody who listens to this, go see it. If you don't like it, Douglas will buy the pizza. <laughs> Two toppings only though. Okay. <laughs> well that sounds fair. All right, Chris. All right. Yeah. Well listen, thanks so much for coming on. It was nice talking to you. Uh do you have a website you want to give out, a personal one or any website you want to give out? Chris music dot com. Okay. And you can and you can uh, you can listen to me on Spotify, Chris Malky and Deluxe, or Vic Malky and the Blue Bands if you want some Christmas blues. Um, yeah, so I keep working away. I have three more movies coming out. I did three features last year: a thriller called um, Mother May I, about um, a couple who moves into a house when the mother's deceased, and the, the new and the new bride who never knew the mother uh, takes on. The personality of her dead mother-in-law. Oh, very creepy. That sounds creepy. And then yeah. it is creepy. And then we did Deadland. Uh, Robert Rodriguez's wife uh, produced it, and Deadland's a, a border drama about um, immigration in the Mexico-Texas uh, border. And and then I have a movie coming out called Redeemer. It's an 1880s western. About I play the dad of. Who's, uh, goes into town drunken and ho- drinking and whoring, and raiders come and raid my ranch and and kidnap my daughter-in-law and my indigenous wife and try to sell them into the slave sex slave trade in uh, in uh, Colorado. And we track them down and take care of business. Me and uh, Mo brings plenty. You know who's on um, Yellowstone? Wonderful actor. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's called the Redeemer. So. Yeah, I've got three big, big movies coming out, and yeah, I'm going up to uh, going up to Vancouver to do uh, the Power. It's the new Amazon a TV series that um, begins in October. I'm a busy guy. Yellowstone. That's yeah. the one, Bob Yari, because I interviewed him not too long ago. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a good show. Yeah, for sure. He's the producer of that. Yeah. Not of my show. Oh, maybe I'm no, thinking. Of, of my... I'm thinking of something else then, because. Uh, Yellowstone yeah, done, TV series. Yeah, you, yeah, you think of that. Yeah. yeah, I've done like eight westerns. I did, uh, I did Broken Trail with Robert Duvall, and uh, that was a, that was a wonderful series. We won, we won uh, three three Emmys, and yeah, it was a big deal on AMC. Uh, you were also in in Whiplash. Say again? You were also in Whiplash. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah we got we won three. We got four Academy Award nominations and won three Academy Awards. Unbelievable. Yeah, that that's amazing. Film that, 
best, including best picture. Yeah. Wild. Uh, J.K. Simmons. Uh, yeah. He, he's a wonderful actor. He, he's just fantastic, you know. You know, he's a, he's a veteran, kind of like me. Yeah, I've been around. <laughs> I've done 110 movies. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, where are you located, Douglas? Are you, uh, where are you at? I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, nice. Yeah, I used to. We used to be the house band up in uh, at uh, the House of Blues at the Crossroads. Oh, okay. There, I know where it is. Mandalay Bay. I'm, yeah, we'll go back up there and rock rock a while. You know. Yeah. I like I like Vegas. It's, it's fun. I like Vegas, but it's Vegas, baby, right? Vegas, <laughs> baby. Yeah, and what happens there stays there. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't remember. <laughs> all right chris hey thanks for coming on i'm going to check out those videos i want to see that super tramp one definitely yeah uh, yeah yeah hit me and then uh, shooters count too check it out and hit me and tell him tell me how much you loved it i will all right okay take care world with world without you dog okay world without you okay talk to you later take care chris Bye-bye. thanks so much bye-bye